Got a little cauldron system going in. That's the first one of these Janey Hall units I fitted. Um, doesn't look a bad little unit. I think they're made in Malaysia. Uh, some usual sort of Chinese fan motors. Um, it's got a microchannel condenser, which I'm I'm not convinced. Um, they're just fairly new here on fridge kit, so I'm not sure how durable it's going to be. But anyway, that's what a lot of stuff's got on it now. Um, I've mounted it on these cantilever arms, which I've bolted to the uh, concrete slab the building's built on, because there's not a lot to fix to. Um, it's only about six inches deep, so uh, anyway, that's that. Pipe work is up the wall and then through above the ceiling and then onto the cold room which we might have a look at in a minute. Um, it's not a bad little unit. Um, I prefer some proper service valves rather than these air conditioning style ones but that's what everyone's fitting nowadays because they're cheaper. Um, a nice little Tecumseh compressor in there. Uh, electric's quite tidy. This is uh, it's the on-off switch, but it's also an overload. So um, that'd be on. If it tripped, it it would sit in that mid position, um, and then off was off there. And you've got us, you've got the switch on the outside. So I've just got to make these three wires off, and then Dave's going to brace the pipe in. And then I've got the controller to fit on the. Um, Evaporator and the uh, everything inside. Yeah, they seem for what they are. Um, got a tidy looking uh, little unit. A lot of the uh, electrical stuff here now has these um, combined um, starter screws where you could use a flat, or these ones are flat or a posi drive. Um, which is slightly different from a Phillips um, and neither of them does a good job on them so I've actually got a set of these screwdrivers that have a um, they fit the screws properly and um, that one's a posi drive one you can see the extra little uh, line there and then uh, I've got that's a number two Got a number one. I've also got two Phillips ones, and you can see the difference there. That hasn't got the little extra piece. But yeah, they're worth getting, especially if you if somebody's done these up with one of these stylus screwdrivers. You'd you'd struggle to get them undone with a normal one. Right, it's got that wired. And that's that's clipped back in, so it's just on a DIN rail, so it just snaps in. Um, got your start relay at the top there for the compressor, and your start and run capacitors are all in there. They're fairly accessible. Um, the lid. That's a uh, wiring diagram on it. It's fairly basic. Just slide the neutral in, and there, there's no contact or anything. It's actually switching the uh, compressor through the pressure switch directly because um, it's only a little, it only pulls about six or seven amps um, and then that just, uh, just that gets snaps back on there and there's two, uh, three screws I'll get that put back on then we'll have a look in this side right, yeah you've got two screws, top and bottom and that's that's that, so we've got a Unitaid or Tecumseh compressor and these new ones have a plug, that whole thing's a plug uh, the old ones used to be um, push on crimps and a little plastic cover with that I think that whole thing comes off as uh, one um, Saginamaya pressure switch which uh, are Japanese um, but I think they've been bought out by Danfoss, but they're pretty good quality. And the manual reset on the um, high side. Um, Henry Dreyer. 
Uh, I'm not sure what make the sight glass is. And then tucked in behind here, we've got a um, lever ball, not lever ball, just a ball valve um, and a Schrader port you can get to just about from behind. Um, so you can pump it down to change the dryer if you need to. And the receiver is actually behind the fan motor um, in there. So uh, the only thing to be aware of with these ball valves, and I've seen it on, I think on the Danfoss units as well, is uh, the um, the bit you turn. Normally, I don't know how well that's going to. Well, we can zoom in on that. Um, the bit you turn, normally you would put that in line with the pipe for the tap to be open, whereas these actually work the other way. You need the little pin that goes through below that, that sort of stops you turning it too far. That needs to be in line with the pipe for it to be open, so they're kind of, if you're used to the normal ones, they, they look open when they're shut and vice versa. So that's something to be aware of. But obviously somebody in China has copied them and got that around the wrong fucking way. Um, but I think the Danfoss ones have the same style valves on them. But yeah, all in all, it's not a bad, um, bad looking little unit. Some of these fan motors are any good. What are that? Wei Guang or whatever that says. Looks like Polestar. Probably all made in the same, uh, same place. But uh, anyway. Right, so we're pretty much done out here. Yeah, it's quite a small room. It's got uh, two meat rails in there for hanging hams, and then we've had to squeeze that in above the door, which is not ideal. Um, there's not a lot of room up that side. We just about have to get into the electrics through the bottom. But, uh, all the other shape units were narrower, narrower, and you know shallower. Um, but they're a lot wider, um, and then that would reduce the amount of room you've got for the rails. Uh, could even put another little short piece down here if they needed to get a bit more storage in it. Drain has got to go out the side. It's no lower than the door, so it shouldn't hit the head on it. And then we've got a trap on there. Um, got the valve brazed in up there. Solenoid I've put inside. I've put a screw through there so it's fixed in there solid. Pipe work just goes up the top through there and it goes above the roof through the two rooms to outside. Okay, that's the drain pan off. Um, I've got a cable for the solenoid to go through, but I don't think I'm going to put it through there in case it rubs through. I think I can just I can just sit in the drain pan. That'd be okay. Um, and then we've got here that's our fan motor terminal box and then above it is the electrics for the heaters. So all I'm going to do is just drill through straight through the ceiling um, to get our conduit in. So as I see you can actually it's not ideal but you can get in just about to work on them. Uh, this this panel would come off if you needed another couple of inches. <coughs> and then we've got this uh, Danfoss Optima controller. Um, it's got a built-in uh, breaker and an earth leakage trip. Um, I've been fitting these for a few years. I've not had any trouble with them at all. Um, the only issue with them is when you turn them off they still show the temperature display and I've had a few people where they've turned them off to do something clean the room out or something has happened, somebody's turned it off and then you get a phone call saying the thing's too hot and you have to get them to make sure that it is actually on but other than that they're uh, pretty good
right, uh, got the controller mounted and wired. I've run the conduit up at the top there and put a T in there. And that's where the power needs to go in so the spark he can run them in another bit of conduit down to a switch or he can do some up the top there. Um, but he doesn't need to get into that box. Um, got all the wiring done up there. It's a bit busy. Just waiting for the um, stuff to dry on here. I've put some of that brush on electrical tape for the uh, temperature sensors. Got the air temp one just poked out there. And the coil temp one is poked in. There's a spare tube for a defrost heater, so I've just poked it in there. It's roughly in the centre of the coil. Um, yeah, so it's a figure bond. They're quite nice little evaporators, actually. We've got that rather for That's what I mean about it being off. All it does is flashes out. They don't always notice. Just switched off, I'll just turn it back on again. <coughs> I took the drain out of the side, I put a connector in there, so if you need to, you can undo it and just about get the uh, drain pan down. There's two screws in the front, and then it just unhooks. Quiet. We've put a fan speed control on it because it was um, um, wasn't condensing high enough, and the side glass is full of bubbles. So uh, we blocked the, put some over the condenser to start with, and it filled the side glass up pretty much straight away, which is an indication it's uh, um, taking too much heat out. So we've got a speed control on there. Flex run out of there just on a temporary supply, so he's got to get a sparky to um, put an isolator out here on the same inside. And that's it, really. Got a bit of work to do on the drain and go around sealing all the holes up. Um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> 